Okay, class. <coughs> Salam alaikum rahmatullah. Um, welcome to Big Bang Data Science Solutions, week um, number nine of the uh, fifteen week training program, free training program in in data science and artificial intelligence, in collaboration with few Moroccan universities. We are now in week number nine and session number number two. Uh, we have two more weeks. Uh, we got week number 10 and week number 11 and the remaining week is going to be uh, for the capstone project and for the uh, the quizzes for the exam so but what i'm going to do is next week um, week number 10 is going to be our last week i'm going to try to cover um, you know support victim she and canaan in one in the first session the second session i'm going to try to cover the model deployment and after that, um, it's going to be um, the final exam, pro the capstone project, and of course, the certificate <coughs> from the uh, uh, University of Marrakesh. So, um, yesterday, uh, we uh, talked about the naive base, uh, no, the algorithm naive base uh, that we use. Today, we are going to talk about the logistic regression as. Um, a third model that we are gonna try to um, to learn for the same business problem in terms of the business problem we are still working for our insurance let me grab my tablet so we are still working for this our insurance and uh, we've been hard as data scientists and our job is um, to find a way, find a way to help this uh, our insurance, um, you know, fix. Sorry, guys. Yeah, find a way to help this our insurance uh, fix. Yeah, trying to get this. Okay, so it should work now. So we got the problem. Yes, we got this problem here. And this business is losing too much money because of the fraudulent claims. They hired you as data scientists and you're trying to find a way to figure out a way to fix this problem using data plus analytics. Okay, analytics and it could be machine learning, it could be uh, statistics, it could be something else. So, um, again, as um, as usual, um, we, uh, we plan to use CRISP-DM, which is a methodology that most used in analytics. So we started with business understanding, spent a lot of time understanding the problem. Then we moved into data understanding. We spent time preparing, pre-processing the, uh, the data. Then, of course, um, we spent time um, transforming the data to a level of assumption that needed for um, anal analytics. And finally, uh, we started building some models. As after we have a version that best that is ready now we started building models and in models we uh, uh, we already we already know the model that we are going to use based on the analytic approach that we determined earlier so we know we are going to be using classification why because we have a, um, a target variable that is either nominal or um, trinary or binary or um, multi-class but our is binary zero or one so we split data into 80 percent versus 20 percent some of the models that we are going to be using for uh, you know, for scaling it could be um, uh, requires scaling otherwise you are going to get a bias since we are using classification, it's always good to have a dummy model, a model that we can compare our learning to. So we build a model, we train a model, we test the model, and of course we calculate or we compare 
how the model is doing with actual with what we actually have then at the end of the day we are going to pick a model that best fit our needs so uh, yes we are using supervised learning as I mentioned yeah, let me change um, I need to change the uh, the color so let me do something very quick insert insert where is the pen There we go, good. So, yes, then, um, no, it's not. Anyways, so we are using classification and we are going to start um, when we are building a classification model. First, we are going to start with uh, the, an, easy, an easy model. So we started with decision tree, then we did naive base and logistic regression. Of course, we are going to still need, need to do a support vector machine, maybe corner line support vector machine, Kainer's neighbor, and finally, we are going to do deployment. You know, unfortunately, this is a 30 week program to cover all of these algorithms, it's going to take us eight months, and uh, this is only a free program, so we need to shortcut everything and concentrate on a few things simply to give you a taste of what. Um, no, to motivate you, give you a taste uh, and motivate you to um, continue this journey once we are done on your own. And um, of course, I will be uh, supporting you guys if you need, if you need anything. And so you have my number, you have my website, my email address, my WhatsApp. Reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to assist further once we complete. So when when we are dealing with when we, we are dealing with machine learning, it's always good to know a few things. Yeah, always good to know a few things. One complexity and number two speed. But honestly, on the top of this, we need to know what is the pros versus cons of this algorithm. Okay, number two, we need to know the assumptions what are the assumptions of this model. Number three, uh, we need to know the um, object function number three and um, number four object functions pros and cons assumption object functions uh, how how it works and um, yeah, pros and cons, assumptions, object function, how it works, and um, also, um, I forgot the other one. Maybe speed. Uh, speed of the model. Of course, there are other things that you need to know about each and every model before you make your final decision. Decision on which model to take which model to um, to use or uh, as a final as a winning uh, winning model winning or champion actually actually it's called winning champion model okay so we talked about decision tree and of course um, in the presentation that we have decision tree is using uh, decision tree is using the ISM trying to split um, I, I'm talking about the applied decision tree not 
the mathematical decision tree. So it does use attribute selection measures to uh, split the records and find the best record using either Gini index or entropy or um, classification error okay that is how decision tree works in nutshell and decision tree is nothing but um, upside down tree that is uh, using rules um, to determine the direction then after that uh, we um, learned about the uh, naive base okay uh, yeah, naive base it's not it does not use in ism it's not using ism it's a uh, naive base is a probabilistic model it's probabilistic model means uh, the assumptions um, are very hard to to um, to come up with and um, this naive base it's using uh, what we call the uh, conditional probability uh, this is conditional probability this is the formula the probability of a given b is the probability of b a and b divided by probability of b so this is the formula uh, this naive base is using and naive base is not uh, uh, it's a family it's a family of uh, uh, it, it's a family of um, models a family of models so it finds first the the uh, probability of a class and the probability of um, a condition given um, or a probability of a feature given the class as A or B. There are two serious assumptions. Number one is independence. So it means the correlation between uh, uh, between your X and X1 should be equal or closer to zero or the correlation between all x's should be um, equal or uh, uh, equal to zero number number one number two these features they should be Gaussian should be Gaussian or a uh, bell shaped and this condition they are very very hard to stand very hard to um, find a data where all your features are independent and all your features are um, uh, you know um, normally distributed very hard to find these two conditions in the data if you do your model should be uh, your prediction should be great okay so um, of course, uh, the pros and cons, um, it's easy and fast to predict when assumptions are dependent halts. When assumptions of independence halts, naive base classifier is better, will do better. So the first thing that you need to do as data scientists, when we are talking about naive base, make sure that, make sh sure that the assumptions are met. This is very important. Just look into your assumptions. Are, is my data making the assumptions of the model? And every model uh, comes with, um, is built with few assumptions in mind. Except, uh, of course, non, non algebraic uh, algorithms like decision tree, random forest, and all of the uh, models that are built on the top of decision tree. Um, they have few or no um, assumption at all. Okay, so now we are going to move into a third algorithm that is logistic regression. Yeah, logistic regression. What it does, it's a probabilistic. It's a probabilistic algorithm. Also, it does use a probability, 
And um, the way this uh, logistical regression works, it transforms your target variable, your binary, binary target variable into continuous target variable by uh, multiplying your target by using a logic function it's called logic function also it's called sigmoid sigmoid function okay that is in nutshell without going into the mathematical behavior um, of um, uh, of the uh, uh, you know mathematical behavior of how this logistic uh, logistical regression uh, works so it is not a regression yeah it's not it's different than the regression uh, learning classification versus regression so logistic regression is not a regression but it simply uh, means that the target variable is continuous <coughs> So uh, the way it works again, uh, as I said, uh, is simply calculate the, uh, the, the odds, the lo log of the odd, and use the probability. There's three, three parts that it does use, it uses to transform your, uh, your um, binary target variable into a continuous target variable. And uh, this uh, logistical uh, logistical regression uh, logistical regression has um, uh, some assumptions also let's take a look so uh, number one logistical regression does not tolerate missing values because it's a um, uh, it's a probabilistic. If you have a missing value, then your probability is going to be uh, biased. Also, I mean, you don't have categorical data. Always good to have numerical data. And um, and it's not. Uh, logistic regression is not that uh, only works works better on uh, variables uh, on a binary uh, tar uh, binary target uh, binary data not multi multi class data these are some of the assumptions for uh, the binary for the uh, logistic regression pros and cons logistic regression is widely used technique um, because it's very efficient logistic regression does not require many computation Logistic regression is highly interpretable, does not require input features, okay, does not require um, to be scaled, but I doubt this. Logistic regression does not require any tuning. Logistic regression is easy to regularize. And for the, the cons, logistic regression that, that does work better when you remove attribute that is unrelated, means um, independence. Logistic regression cannot solve non-linear problem. So, uh, non-linear problem um, or linearly separable. So, if you get this data that looks like this, for example, and um, you have a binary, and when you plot your data, when you plot your data, you see all the um, legitimate claims in one side and fraudulent claims in one side of course with few you know few outliers um, here and there so this is a linear problem means you can separate this the legitimate from fraudulent uh, with a line it's called linearly separable so logistic regression works better for something like this but if you have a data that looks like this means there is no way you can um, separate the legitimate from fraudulent there is no way 
there is no way you can separate the more I mean you are gonna get a lot of errors so the uh, logistic regression does not work if your data is uh, if uh, your problem is um, nonlinear um, a handor mathematical uh, it's it's a um, it's a math it's a lot of uh, confusion about math I'm not gonna go that direction unfortunately but uh, yeah it's all um, it's all about math it's a lot of math and uh, as I said I'm not going that direction so we are gonna stick with uh, with the, the applied part of it so if um, to find to find if your um, data is linearly separable or not linearly separable, all we need to do that is something that you need to um, to find out uh, during data um, understanding. So during visualization, you should determine if your data is linearly separable or non linearly separable, and based on that, of course, you. Um, determine uh, within your analytical approach what would be the best model to use so do you under data understanding you should if you are familiar with models and their assumptions especially their assumptions you should you should be uh, able to determine the best analytical approach and the best model to use during data visualization phase of the process okay that is very uh, simple uh, logistic regression and again when we are building models few um, steps required few steps required number one um, it's we are gonna um, identify x and y Number two, we need to split. Number three, uh, we need uh, to uh, import uh, modules and libraries. Number four, we are going to uh, initiate the, um, the model. Number five, a train the model. Number six, test. Number seven, compare. Some of these um, mo some of these models require um, scaling, especially the non uh, algebraic model does require scaling okay okay so now we are going to move into uh, uh, yeah we got a data is the same data that we had but ver version number three in version in uh, ver in this version uh, yeah Okay, in this version number one, we uh, uh, reduced the dimensionality of the data. Number two, we um, replaced the missing values. Number three, we of course deal. with outliers and uh, and uh, skewness of your data number four we uh, uh, transform categorical data into numerical data number five we uh, reduce dimensionality one more time using machine learning now we got version three so this uh, version three is way better than this data here way better it's a uh, ready 
to go. And this version 3, we have a fact that is 75% of our data, of our claims in this historical data is legitimate. 25% is fraudulent. So this is a fact. This fact is what we are going to use as base model. A model that we are going to use to compare the goodness of any model that we are going to be uh, able to, uh, um, to, to use later. Any question, please? Are you guys all in? Are we all on the same page? Yes, maybe. Please speak out. <coughs> okay, okay. So uh, now let's move on. The first thing we gotta do is number one, import the models and libraries we are gonna use. The generic ones, the NumPy, uh, no, Matplotlib, and Pandas. Then we are gonna read our data. Of course, um, now we got 135 features. Then uh, we are gonna look into our target variable. We got 75%, 25%. And we need to identify X and Y. X is anything, is all the features, is all 135 features, all these features, except, except the target variable. Okay. And Y is the, our target variable. After that, we are gonna split. No, again, splitting is only uh, one method. There are many methods to use, but we are going to use this one for now. Split. And after that, um, we um, going to extract or going to uh, learn the uh, base model or the dummy classifier, which we already know. It should be 75%. Uh, yeah, 75%. So the first thing we did is uh, number one. We started with decision tree by uh, importing the classifier. Then we uh, initiate, initiated or initiate or started the engine using default parameters. Then we trained the model on our 80% x and y then we test the classification on the 20 percent x only and now we got two things to compare we got two things to compare we are going to compare in decision tree print which is the y hat versus um, test which is the y so this is the prediction and this is our actual uh, actuals actuals yes and now we want to see how closer they are to one another and that's give would give us a notion of how the problem uh, how the, uh, the the model is doing so this is the print this is the actual i'm sorry this is the prediction out of this uh, 20, <coughs> you know, uh, um, out of this uh, 200 features, out of 200 features, so 200 records or 20%, yeah, this is our um, 20%, this is our 20%, of course, so this is actual, so in uh, <coughs> the first record of 20% is zero, and my model predicted as zero. Now this is doing good. The second one is zero, my model is doing zero. This is not a good. The, the third one is what? one. My model predicted as one. The fourth one is zero, and my model predicted as one. So this is wrong, this is one error. The second one is uh, is one and my model predicted as one then we continue that comparison 
and at the end we are gonna count how many um, errors that we have how many errors errors we have in zeros and in ones <clears throat> why do we need to know that, that sometimes um, the model uh, sometimes the business sometimes the business is interested in knowing how the model is doing in the positive and the negative cases sometimes the business wants to know how the model is doing in negative cases sometimes the, the business wants to know how the model is doing overall okay if you are working in in a, a <coughs> healthcare projects um, pay attention um, to uh, false positive and uh, false negative it's very important so now we don't we are not going to do manually comparing the actuals to um, uh, to um, the uh, predictions we are going to use a, a method to calculate um, we are going to use uh, you know a measurements that it comes with scikit-learn accuracy score classification report and fusion matrix there are some of the measurements that you could use to measure how good your model is okay so my model uh, so this is the confusion matrix and again this confusion matrix is nothing but is nothing but a comparison between actual and prediction so um, this is uh, this is prediction this is actual and we got here this is the zero this is the one this is the zero and this is the one so out of uh, the model made one twenty five errors in zero and the model made uh, six errors in one so of course in terms of in terms of um, uh, what we call the in terms of uh, how the model is doing it's measured by um, uh, how the model is doing in, in terms of false this is false um, uh, false positive false positive is very um, very uh, very expensive very expensive so we got true negative we got false positive sorry uh, this is a we got false negative and we got true positive false negative is very very expensive give you an example imagine that your wife is pregnant so you went to um, you went to um, to a doctor and the uh, the doctor says no your wife is fat I'm sorry uh, the doctor says yes your your wife is pregnant and of course you are gonna do some shopping and you are gonna spend some um, some money buying preparing for the new baby to come and guess what after six months you find out that your wife is actually fat she was not pregnant but she was fat so what did you lose only you lost some money whereas if the doctor says no no your wife is pregnant is not pregnant she's fat 
And of course, you went out, you, you took your wife to um, you know, a vacation, a trip in the mountains. You went to Atlas Mountains or somewhere for 15 days. Then your, your wife starts feeling the pain. It's a time to deliver. It's now, now you, you find out your, your wife is actually pregnant, not fat. So what would be the price? You are, it could be a life of your wife or the child or one of them. So this is false, negative. This one is false, positive. So false negative is very expensive. And that's why sometimes we look into the goodness of the model, not by looking for into the accuracy, but also how it does in the false, false negative. The, the fewer, the better. The fewer false negatives you have, the better. Uh, yeah, if one score, um, of course, um, if one score um, recall um, and precision, they are used as an alternative to the accuracy if your target variable variable is not balanced okay they are used and there is there are other there are sensitivity sensitivity specificity and there are other measurement that you could use if your target variable is in balance is because the accuracy is not is not a true measurement which one is the best there is no uh, best answer there is no answer which one is the best uh, in a case you could find precision is the best versus if one score if one score is uh, is nothing but recall and precision sometimes you find sensitivity specificity it, it's it's simply uh, depends on the project that you are looking for and depends on the business needs in terms of um, the goodness of, a, of the models. Okay, so our model is the win. Um, yeah, our model has um, six false positive, false negative, 25 false negatives. And in total, the model is 85% um, accuracy then we moved into naive base naive base is a probabilistic model we need to scale so we need to scale our data and we import the naive base again we build a model we train a model we test the model so you got one line two three four lines five lines for the, uh, the scaling and you should be able yeah, you should be able to uh, have an accuracy in terms of um, for the uh, sorry guys for the naive base as you see here we have you know, decision tree is doing much better in terms of false negative so the uh, decision tree was six and for naive base is 30. but that does not mean the naive base um, is worse than decision tree of course um, you know if if your data does not meet the assumptions that is going to cause um, a problem with the accuracy okay let's take a look into the accuracy here and 64 that is weird um, Okay, uh, let's run this one more time. I don't know, but it gave us 64. 64 again, it's, it's worse. 
it's worse than the um, baseline baseline is 75 so th this is too um, too small or this is worse worse than guessing so naive base is not uh, is not the best option but again um, we need to determine if the data hasn't made the assumptions okay, now we are going to move into logistic regression so we are for logistic regression again we are going to import the uh, we are going to import the um, the classifier from the scikit-learn so we are going to import the classifier which is logistic regression then we are going to build the classifier we are going to train the classifier and we are going to uh, test the model then calculate the confusion matrix we made 20 and now calculate the uh, is 81 finally what we could do is compare the three models together compare the three uh, models together so uh, we got the random or we got the base model 75 and the decision tree is 84 naive base is actually uh, out of the game and logistic regression logistic regression is 81 so I would I would probably um, I, up, up to now up to now because there are other models we, to use in the future up to now mm, I think uh, we should uh, consider um, looking into um, improving the quality of this uh, logistic regression a uh, few things that we could do we are going to look into the assumptions in the data to make sure that we made them and if that is the case then we might need to look into the hyper parameters means tuning or optimization okay so we cannot use naive base because it's low than the baseline we cannot use decision tree even though it's better but they're always going to be um, the decision tree is prone is prone to uh, what we call uh, the uh, other fitting okay uh, Bushra Daudi uh, can you explain to us the, the precision recall curve um, I I can do that I have a presentation um, definitely you can do that but let's hold on to your question until um, the next week next week we are gonna have uh, we are gonna do some comparison and we are gonna learn about uh, different measurement okay then we are gonna learn about the uh, uh, recall sensitivity specificity and of course we are going to learn about the um, rock IUC and rock uh, IUC curve uh, we are going to talk about that hopefully and um, if we have time next week okay so there's a lot uh, this is a very long uh, lecture explaining the difference between all of this um, uh, type of measurements that we could use um, to determine the goodness of a model. Okay, Bushra, are you clear? Bushra uh, Daudi? Yes, sir, thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. We'll talk about it um, next week, inshallah. Okay, sir, thank you. Uh, just remind me, just remind me, then we'll uh, definitely spend time. So, okay. what, well, what, we, what we could do. 
is um, we are going to find you know, we are going to find the best model yeah, we are going to try to find uh, the best model and out of those are uh, best model yeah we are going to find the best model and uh, let me see yes yeah we are going to find uh, now we just did a uh, decision tree naive based logistic regression let's finish um, uh, we are going to do support vector machine kernelized um, then knn then we are going to pick a model that is best best model maybe logistic regression most likely then we are going to use um, other measurements you know we are going to use um, other me measurement to determine if um, logistic regression is um, uh, is the, the model of the choice is the winner model then we are going to use that model to uh, deploy a, a solution into production using flask so we are going to use flask next week okay folks any question concerns please any question concerns please okay that's it for tonight uh, i'll see you guys next week uh, please remember next week is going to be our last week we are going to do we are going to finish um, three models and we are the remainder of the week is going to be on deployment after that yes we are going to use a uh, flask for web development for um, we are going to use it for the deployment Flask can be used for so many things including the deployment of a model into production and also <laughs> we are going to use um, we are going to use flask and we are going to use um, um, one uh, uh, what you call it one uh, application and they want you to do some research on it so we are going to use flask plus postman so this is the application we are going to use so please uh, install it in your systems and do some research on it do some research on both flask and postman and we are going to that's what we are going to use for the deployment next week okay any questions concerns please yes sir for the zippos vector model is it more so likely to be offered fitting like a decision tree no uh, it could i mean uh the uh, upper fitting or under under fitting is what we call the bias the bias is always going to be there it's always going to be I mean, you always you are gonna have a bias, and the bias could be caused by internal and external factors. And uh, your job as a scientist is to try to reduce the bias as much as you can. Of course, I mean, decision tree is worse in terms of bias. Uh, logistic regression has some bias in it but it can be it's more controllable than the bias of decision tree logistic regression naive based they have a bias also depends on um, the data you feed but it's controllable also a decision tree is very uh, uh, is prone to bias, prone to overfitting if you let it run all the way to the end. Okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, folks, that's it for tonight. I'll see you guys um, next weekend. Until then, you guys have the, um, the rest of the uh, great rest of the week. And um, talk to you next Sunday, inshallah. Next Saturday, inshallah. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Recording stopped.